the office that I'm in charge of is actually responsible for Caltrans research related to uh, intelligent transportation systems and particularly connected vehicles and automated vehicles. You have autonomous vehicles that operate in isolation. You have connected vehicles that are communicating, but drivers are still in control and responsible for their safe operation. If you combine those two things into connected automation, then you get the best of both worlds. I firmly believe that this is the, the right approach uh, to um, automating vehicles. We're predominantly addressing the infrastructure debate right now. Transit signal priority, well we th think of it as more of a conventional traffic engineering measure to facilitate bus movement. It, it, it is a connected vehicle application. Metro is working with City of Los Angeles, County of LA, Caltrans, District 7, SCAG, um, and some of our s smaller local agencies. We formed a coalition for transportation technology. This is something we did in 2015. Top, at the top of our agenda for our broad regional discussions is connected vehicle and autonomous vehicle. In 2018, we're going to start working on our LA County connected vehicle strategic plan. These are all things that we are hoping to build into uh, the update of our next long range transportation plan. Uh, if we're successful in doing that, we'll have a funding path that we can move forward with so that we can deploy, deploy more of these pilots and then actually bring this technology um, into true fruition over the next, you know, 5, 10, 15 year period. I think a lot of people get caught up in the hype of the benefits of connected and automated vehicles. They have about 40,000 traffic deaths per year. It's a public health crisis. Approximately 90% of those collisions are caused by human error. We could kind of win this battle against public safety if we went to a fully automated fleet. Pretty much the majority of roadways that these connected autonomous vehicles are going to operate on are controlled at the local level. Without the infrastructure in place, without the connectivity of the infrastructure communicating to these autonomous vehicles or connected vehicles, they're going to be making these decisions themselves. Being able to communicate, the infrastructure being able to communicate to these vehicles is imperative. A lot of city agencies are doing good things, they're trying to get their priorities in place. We're working right now with the Orange County Transportation Authority to look at their vehicle to infrastructure state of the practice to really help guide them. And what we're finding is a lot of these small local cities don't even have the bandwidth to really think about more than they're doing today. They're going to need to step up and provide more assistance to these smaller local cities to make sure that we make these investments. 5G is market driven, it's not government driven. But it has a very strong transportation pull because transportation and specifically automotive but you can't just talk about automotive in a vacuum. And specific inventions and specific ideas are being, being formed around how 5G could help. From a communications perspective, you can start doing all sorts of interesting things like draw vehicles very close together. You can have see-through vehicles. You can have all sorts of things. This is being rapidly standardized, and we anticipate that the standards will be done in about 2020. Could you deliver a local or basically hyper-local service, such as doing actuating a traffic signal, the same time that you're talking to a traffic management center? And that's what the vision is, and that's what we envision. And even what's available in standards, and soon enough in silicon, today.